Welcome back to the show. Let's talk to Connor Campbell, financial analyst at Spreadix. Morning to you, Connor. Good morning. Uh, we've got some stocks to go through. Let's kick off with Barrett Developments, uh, the stock mnemonic, BDEV. Um, up, what, 31% in 2017? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's ripe for correction. Yeah, it's had, if it, we'll see in a second as well when we go on to Bovis Homes, the, the property sector, the house moving sector, very, very, very strong this year. Obviously, you have to bear in mind it had a pretty, you know, rocky second half of 2016 with the Brexit vote and the sort of the, the subsequent issues uh, the stocks had there. It's really, really pushed high this year. You sort of see the Barrett chart really is sort of the, the blueprint for the rest of the property sector. Barrett hasn't had any real issues of its own this year. Uh, Pretext profit back in February was up 9%. Um, in May, it said the sector was still good despite them being some signs of softening. It's on track for its highest number of home completions since 2008. Very, very healthy figures. I think uh, in July it said its average selling price was up nearly 6% to £275,000. I think it's expecting a 12% rise in pre-tax profit to around £740 million. All of its figures are very strong. You know, the one dip you see in that May-June period, that was around the election, you know, sort of the pre-election jitters and post-election chaos. That was what weighed on it then. It has said that it's expecting modest growth in its sort of financial 2018. It did say that's down to shortage of skilled workers rather than any, you know, sort of other sector issues. I think investors will maybe want, want some kind of comments around that with its, with its figures on Wednesday. I will point out, it, it sort of struggled to break the 625 mark. You know, it did it earlier in the, uh, at the end of last week, but has fallen back beyond that since. Our clients are selling around that 620 mark. I think, that, like you said, they're looking for some kind of correction. Uh, correction. It's climbed quite high this year, yeah. and without something significant, it may struggle to remain at those levels. Understood. Let's go on to Bovis Homes, um, BVS, um, up 30% on the year. Record highs. Again, it's, it's a similar issue to Barrett Developments, but it, I think this, this stock more than Barrett highlights how strong the house builders are, because Bovis has not had a good year really you know the stock really flatters what's been going on with the company you know at the end of last year it snuck out a profit warning i think on the 28th of december which is a There's bit always cheeky. one yep uh you know that was due to them sort of uh being found out that they'd been bribing customers basically to move into unfinished homes cut cut to february and it had covered it had to pay out i think seven million to repair those homes that it had forced customers to move into it also had its ceo abruptly depart in january you know, then it had that uh, sort of the takeover speculation with Galliford Tri and Red Row. That come, that, nothing come of that really, but it still managed to hold on to most of the growth it got from that in March. Since then, you know, there hasn't really been any good news. It revealed that it took a £2.8 uh, £2. million pound hit from sort of the advisory services it had used around the Galliford Tri and Red Row takeovers. In July, it said it was having to add on another £3.5 million pounds to do with, you know, basically repairing the houses it forced customers to fit into. It's cutting production by 10 to 15% to try and avoid trying to meet sales targets uh, and, you know, avoid, you know, bribing customers, basically. Yet, none of that has mattered, really. And it's just, you know, you see, climb 30%. Again, though, like with Barrett, our clients are sort of selling around that 10, 50 mark. There is plenty of room for a correction, especially for a stock that has plenty of bad news sort of still lurking. You know, he's got a new CEO. This will be his first sort of proper report on Thursday. Um, investors will want to hear, you know, hear what his strategies are for both his homes going forwards. I think it is going to be cuss cutting measures, getting rid of sort of any dead weight, really, and trying to sort of reduce its ambitions to try and prevent it, you know, any naughty behaviour, really. But like I said, our clients are selling around the 10.50 mark. Understood. Heaven forbid if had any good news. That's right, <laughs> but we'll go ahead. Um, the stock code on that GOG, what are your thoughts, sir? Oh, he's had an awful year, you know. Go ahead, uh, group, best known for Govia Thames Link, which means it runs South, uh, Southern Railway, which is the most despised railway for good yes. reason in the country. <laughs> uh, in February, you can see it plunged off the back of its uh, a half year profit warning. And that was all related to Southern, you know, the railway had seen protracted strikes you know, throughout the end of 2016, heading into 2017. And that had dragged uh, pretext profit for the half year lower by 11%. And since then, it just hasn't had any good news, really. Uh, I think in May, it said that uh, like for like passenger journeys that go via Thames think were down 3.5%. In June, they said they were down to the full year 4%. I think at South East, and they're also down around 0.5%. The one, the, sort of the one high that amongst all this was London Midlands. That was seeing passenger journeys up 4%, around 4.5%. However, in August, the Department of Transport said they were awarding the West Midlands uh, franchise, franchise, which had been yep. operating under London Midlands, to a consortium including uh, a go-ahead Dutch rival of Belio. So, you know, it sort of lost the one 
good railway it had, basically. Bus revenues are okay, but I still think the focus is going to be on the railways, given how much sort of havoc they've caused this year. I think investors are going to be looking for, well, how much is it going to have to revise its sort of financial figures for the next year now that it's lost London Midland. Our clients, they are buying around that £17 mark, £17.50 mark. They are, you know, there is room for it to climb. It's fallen so far this year, there is room on the slightest bit of good news. I'm just not sure where the good news is going to come from, really. But like I said, our client's buying around that 750 mark. Well, on a personal note, I use Southern, and on Saturday we got diverted, and the train driver over the tannoy said, I please, please insist you all claim back your fare, <laughs> because I'd rather it goes to you than the shareholders. That was the train driver. That's sort of sums it up, really. That's the thought of the day. Connor, as always, thank you very much. Thanks very much.